and welcome. It's the PHNX Cardinals podcast, uh, March Madness edition. We're mad about you. Like and subscribe. Leave us a five star wherever you get your programming. I'm Johnny Venerable. He is Bo Brock on this football Thursday, not college basketball. We're here to talk <laughs> our sweet baby Arizona Cardinals on your premier Cardinal podcast as trade offers could be abound for one Monty Austin Ford, who spoke yesterday. But first, remember, like and subscribe. Leave us a five star. Mm. Become a diehard. Go phnx.com and Bo Brock, my man to my right. Austin Ford fielding and offers, you think, already at this point? Yeah, I think he's seeding them like a March Madness bracket, and he's just going to see, you know, which one is going to potentially get the job done. As he said yesterday, they'll field him, and sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to find a match yeah. as far as accepting a trade offer from some team that's trying to get up the draft board, but they're always willing to listen and consider. Uh, no matter where they are in the board. It doesn't mean with them at four or 27 this year, whether it's down the road next year, if they're picking hopefully in the 20s uh, because they made a push for the playoffs and, and got a ticket to the dance um, that, you know, that they're not going to get offers from some team wanting to get up and, and get a certain prospect. So there's a quarter, couple quarterback needy teams out there. We've identified them. Now we need to look at some of the packages. What kind of deals Monty Austin Fort is going to have to think about real hard or could he just keep it simple stupid and take the six foot four playmaker out of Columbus Marvin Harrison Jr. active on Twitter today retweeting some uh, highlights of his just to remind everybody that he is the <laughs> goat of this class which I appreciate maybe reminding Monty Austin Ford hey guys over here I'm available yeah. draft me uh you know I thought it's funny before we get into potential trade packages What's better, Vikings, Giants, et cetera. And your boy Jody Ehrler went on airwaves today, and I, I mm -hmm. thought he made a pretty bold statement, basically saying that he believed, in his opinion, that Monty Austin Ford, with his comments yesterday, suddenly preparing this fan base, this community here in the Valley, that they were going to trade the pick. Now, do you agree with that? You were front row for that press conference yesterday. Do you think Austin Ford, and again, we have the clips from yesterday, if we want to reference them, was preparing everybody that, hey, guys, listen, it's going to be a pretty significant trade package coming our way that is going to be too good to pass up. Here's where I was after the show yesterday and kind of having going through it, us talking through it live with all the great people in the chat. Yeah. And everybody that's super chatted and, and all that. Uh, and we, we appreciate all that. It's, it's a great discussion. That's what we're doing each and every day. Um, and I was like, man, I thought that Monty Osfort was – more forthcoming yesterday. Maybe it's just, you know, he's more uh, relaxed his job. And he mentioned, you know, the stark differences between this time last year and now and how much more prepared they are. And they're not just kind of, you know, it's not a whirlwind experience. Yeah. But it seems to me like Monty Austin Fort saying, hey, big neon sign open for business with the fourth overall pick or any other pick kind of that seems a bit out of character for for my taste I, it was it a play for Monty Austin for it to kind of keep anybody that's covering Marv off his scent a little bit and say yeah yeah we're, we're considering all things everything's on on the table and, and maybe he's just trying to to get number 18 from the Buckeyes for sure and it feels like he's he's almost a near guarantee at fourth overall to be there and just make sure that he's doing everything within his power to, to make that happen. That'd be some mega mind games, head games. If he's, if he's doing that, just you, to ensure you, that you don't, are you, are you thinking that? No, he's not I'm not doubting that at all. I just, I, I would be shocked beyond belief. If we fast forward to draft night on April 25th and the new England Patriots go to the podium and, and announce Marvin Harrison jr. Is a, a member of their franchise. I just can't fathom that happening. So with that of, of my mindset, I I think Austin Ford was kind of laying the foundation yesterday that, guys, this is very touch and go. Um, I I don't always think that, it, that he's going to be so forthright. Like last year, like it was almost like they were more aggressive what, what we had heard internally that they wanted to move down. Benjamin Albright, a bunch of people came on this podcast and said the Cardinals are trying to move the pick well before the draft. Mm -hmm. Yet Austin Ford, with his comments, and I don't know if it was because it was new last year, like, very reserved, like, hey, if there's a great player there, we're going to take him. We have no, we, you know, we're not going to force anything. I do feel like yesterday he was much more aggressive with his mindset. Now, Matt, that could be a ploy. That could be a play. 
I also feel like it's just a better quarterback draft this year. There are more options, and there are teams in striking distance that mm. need a quarterback. So I'm just trying to connect the pieces of the puzzle here. I think this is my opinion. Okay, I don't have the source or anything. I think they want to take advantage of a team that's not the Minnesota Vikings in a small trade up mm -hmm. or picks that they still can secure what they consider a top five player, non quarterback in this draft. I think Minnesota, listen, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. That to me feels too far down for Austin Ford. Like you just went through a four win season, you can pivot to more picks. But you already doubled down on this draft anyway, and you're going to dilute it even more. I, it, I, I just, I feel like this draft, the reputation that it has, Bo. I think if you had to ask Austin Ford, his preference it would be trade down for more picks, stay in the top ten, stay in striking distance of a top tackle, a top receiver, Dallas Turner, the best defensive player. Is that crazy? Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's not crazy. It, it's not. Um, I mean, I, I disagree. And I, I think there's an important part of this in SC Arizona animal talking about it too. And Minnesota wants Drake may not JJ McCarthy. We're safe boys. Uh, that, that's a very important piece of this. And it, it's something that, you know, Austin Fort outlined yesterday where he's talking about, you know, this draft class and, and he's, you know, there's tons of mock drafts out there and it's one, two, three, and it's Caleb Williams. It's Jaden Daniels. It's Drake may. Um, and, and then we know about the contingent of Minnesota Vikings basically sending everybody. It's all hands yeah. on deck for Michigan's pro day, which isn't, you know, it, it's not them telegraphing J.J. McCarthy. It's they're doing their homework on J.J. McCarthy because he's as far as all the players in this draft, he's the guy that, that people need to learn the most about. Right. Like, I feel like we've watched enough where we're an offense revolved around Drake May, revolved yeah. around Jaden Daniels, revolved around Caleb Williams, where J.J. McCarthy was a product of a system where he wasn't called upon to have to make and, and be, you know, 80 90% of the offense. He, he could hand the ball off to Blake Corm, and, and they would go on, you know, certain just series where he wasn't asked to throw the ball a lot. And I think that they, they have to do a lot of betting as far as J.J. McCarthy. And if the draft board does fall like a lot of people – expect it to be Caleb Jaden Drake are the Minnesota Vikings are they do they have enough conviction in JJ McCarthy to want to pull the trigger to get up high enough and forth to secure JJ McCarthy and I think that still remains a debate in my opinion yeah, listen I I disagree I think the minute that you come out and add an additional first rounder I think you've made up your mind that you leave the combine you leave your scouting you know, reports behind and you say, okay, we've seen enough from these top four guys. We'd be happy with any of the four. I don't think you move back into the first round. Like if, if you're, if you're still not sold on JJ McCarthy and you feel like there's, you know, significant momentum for Drake may to go third or even second, and you're not going to get a chance at him. You're not making the move last Friday to get up and back in the first round. If yeah. you are, and then you're just like, well, we're just going to make those two picks. You don't, you have no direction as a franchise. You also have no direction as a franchise if you're citing Sam Darnold to be your guy in, in you know, the year of our football lord 2024. <laughs> like, uh, you might as well just re-sign Joshua Dobbs at that point. I They went through enough. They felt so comfortable letting Kirk Cousins go. And then thus, their response is more ammo to get up. The only alternative is trade up at three, trade up at four, trade up at five. It's just like, what kind of package that can they put together for the quarterback of their choosing that will be available? And I'm not ready to discount the fact that the Patriots may say, you know what, let's trade out. But I'm going to tell you right now, with each passing day, it fortifies New England's, I think, stranglehold and taking a quarterback at three. Like New wow. England can yeah. make that make that deal today with Minnesota if they wanted to, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, I mean, Albert Breer, who's dialed in with New England, he's outlined it a couple times this week, most recently yesterday, saying that he's pretty sure it's it's one, two, three. It's done. Yeah, Bears, Commanders, Pats, and you know they've. He's, I think the way that Brewer phrased it is like they've politely declined. They've said, "Hey, yeah, yeah good trade package. We're set. We're going to take quarterback, or we're just going to stick and pick." Yeah, I. So you, so we can, I think, effectively remove them. Like you get to April, the time to trade that pick if you were in New England was right after the combine. 
uh, we saw a couple years ago what happened. San Francisco, shortly after the combine, shortly after Trey Lance's pro day, they got up to three. They're like, hey, who are they going to take? Trey Lance, Mac Jones. But they they had their sights set on somebody. Zach Wilson won second, of course. Uh, was What was it, Darnold going first mm-hmm. overall? So it's like the the Vikings could have made a play for They probably inquired with New England, according to Breer. And New England's like, no, we're good. We're going to take yeah. our quarterback. You don't you don't pass on their package if for Marvin Harrison Jr. As much as I love Marvin. So I, I think now who's the next team in line? It's the Arizona Cardinals. And what is the best package? Let's yeah. say hypothetically, Monty Austin Ford internally has made the decision. We really like Marvin Harrison Jr., but we don't like him enough to pass up a premium package from somebody. So let's start taking offers. Uh, what would those offers yeah. need to look like? Well, I, I I don't agree necessarily with that. And I said yesterday, I don't think it at all is an indictment on what they think about Marvin Harrison Jr., the prospect. <clears throat> I think that all 32 teams would take Marvin Harrison well, for sure. Jr. I'm saying right. in relation but, to the, the right, right. I think if, if they're blown away um, by by a trade proposal, and we'll get into them, uh, but I, I do want to get into this before we get into the uh, the trade proposals, right? Where yeah. it, it's this it's this uh, post where it says basically, yeah, it's Aussie. If we pass up on MHJ, um, no, that's that's he wants to fight everybody in the facility. But there, it's, it's basically, and I've seen this a lot in the chat and social media. Basically, I'm done. I'm done watching this Cardinals team, and that that I'll I I vehemently disagree with. Like this is this is a good problem to have for the Arizona Cardinals to to be able to to be in the catbird seat to to pretty much run and be the linchpin to the 2024 NFL draft and what direction it's going to go and how the dominoes are going to be kind of. Uh, going like after the, the the run on quarterbacks one two three they can dictate if it goes one two three four and then dictate the rest of the top ten and if they get enough uh, and, and return in the trade like they can dictate the rest of the draft and, and they already are in a pretty strong s- position to do so but the Arizona Cardinals will have the ability to to team build and, and really kind of continue to to jumpstart the and expedite this this rebuild. It, it, that's what we said. Like we've maintained, it's like Marvin Harrison Jr. will give you a really good chance to bolster your offense. Right? He's going to be plug and play. He's he's the top prospect, uh, non quarterback in this draft, and he's going to be a guy that absolutely is going to make you better as soon as you you draft him on into your organization. But at the same time, he's not the only path to improving. And having three first rounders really does help you as an organization, look at some some massive needs that they have. Now, they absolutely do have one at wide receiver, but it's a deep class, and you can make the case that they can still improve at the position without Marv and, and really work on some bigger problem areas. Yeah, we got a lot of passion in this fan base right now. It's a good problem to have. I think we got people passionate right now in the chat. Mikey Desert Cardinal, always root for the Cardinals, sick of these fair-weathered fans. I've been a loyal Cardinal fan since 87 mm-hmm. and will always be one. Uh, how about this? Uh, I mean, this this is from a uh, small game boomer. If they trade pick four, they want to fail. How about that? How about this? Nick <laughs> L, if they tr- uh, if they um, are upset about Marv uh, enough to not follow this team, according to Nick L, they're not real fans then. Wade, everyone who says they'll be done will be right back once they start winning. Here's what I will say. Nobody is wrong for their opinion. The Cardinals are gifted a prospect of Marvin Harrison Jr. Right. You're you're incorrect, but everybody <laughs> else is right. office. Come on. Here's what I'll say. The Cardinals with Kyler Murray last year over 17 games, I think probably win 7 games with that roster. So you're telling me after watching Kyler Murray with a bottom to your roster off a torn ACL play good football at the end of the year the Cardinals with a reloaded offseason can't win this year without Marvin Harrison Jr. I think that's pretty laughable. Now, again, everybody's asking, like, mm-hmm. what's your ceiling? I think they can win the Super Bowl with Kyler Murray. I've always been of that mindset. And I think they could win the Super Bowl if they hit on these mm-hmm. draft picks. Yeah. But I also I mean, think that the Marvin Harrison Jr. can be Larry Fitzgerald 2.0 in the postseason and get you there. Just like C.J. Stroud, and he should have won the national championship a couple of years ago against Georgia and subsequently mm-hmm. TCU in the, in the national championship game. So 
There are multiple ways to win a title, but I think, I, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say like our, our dominant number one receivers leading teams to championships right now. They're not. It's right. line of scrimmage play and quarterback play, but you need to elevate your quarterback also with receivers. Right. So I mean, they need that. Like they can't leave this draft without adding to the wide receiver room. No, no they, chance. Right. That, that, that goes without saying. And to, to relinquish the ability to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. is not without hesitation. It's not without just straight pain, right? You're like, like this. You're, you're yeah. just like, oh, man, yeah. I hate doing this. It hurts It hurts your, you, you, your heart. It hurts you to your very core because you're giving up on just being – you're robbing yourself of watching potentially electric playmaking – each and every week. We want to see that. At the end of the day, the NFL is an entertainment business. And there's there's all there's only one team at the end of the season that hoists the Lombardi trophy, right? So to to think like, hey, it's gonna automatically give you, you know, a chance to 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 be the final team and win your last game of the season, like I think that's a bit naive. But at the same time, like if you don't have that, you want to just be able to turn on your TV each and every week and watch your team make big plays, have exciting moments. And Marvin Harrison Jr., regardless the, that he hasn't played it down in his league, you're pretty damn confident that he brings that. And that's why you're just like, shit, this package here's here. Here's what you're banking on with this package. Yeah. Whatever it is, a Vikings package, a Giants package, that the sum of the parts of the package equal or exceed Marvin Harrison Jr.'s production. Like if, let's say you take the Vikings package and you get three ones and a third rounder, right? And Marvin Harrison Jr., let's say he doesn't make the Hall of Fame, but he's a consistent pro bowler for 10 years. Very likely with the kind of prospect he is. You better get an edge rusher that's in and out of pro bowls. You better get an interior offensive lineman that gets a second contract. You better get a corner that gets a second contract. Like that's what it has to come up. There has to be a prospect in the package that matches Marvin Harrison Jr.'s productivity at their position. If they don't, it's a failure. You can't give me right. an edge rusher that's getting five to seven sacks per year. We like him. He'll probably get another deal. Or, or a Byron murphy s corner, right? Or, you know, an interior offensive lineman like a Deuce Latou. He's a solid player. Multiple picks in the package have to accumulate what Marv is giving that other team. And that's a lot of pressure. On your scouts, on Austin Ford, I see somebody in the chat saying, like, this is going to basically dictate um, Monty Austin Ford's career. I don't know if it'll dictate, but it's going to put his career in one of two directions. In line with going two for two with his draft picks or in line for, oh, no, we've made a huge mistake. Because we will know unequivocally by the end of the year. Number one, if Marvin's legitimate and if these picks got a shot. The NFL... Not for long. Like, I don't need 18 to 24 months on first-round picks to know if they can play or not. Like, we all knew Paris Johnson Jr. could ball early on. Michael Wilson, dominating training camp, right? Everybody looked good. Trey McBride here in year two probably should have gotten opportunities year one. Like, we're going to know next December, January, whichever way they opt to go to, in my opinion, if it was the right decision. A lot of pressure on Austin Ford. Ton of pressure. Ton of pressure. Uh, bad, bad cliche pressure creates diamonds, right? Uh, you've got the Arizona Cardinals when you, when you, if you, even if you get Marvin Harrison Jr. on your roster, you, you've got to continue to do a lot of team building. And you have, you already, as it stands right now, with 10 more selections in this draft, you have the ability to do so. But it's going to take, um, you know, great scouting, which I think they have in place. And, and the guy, uh, who's the architect and Monty Austin for continuing to hit in rounds beyond one and hitting in two and, and three, where you've got three selections and you've got six overall top 100 picks. Um, but, you know, when you look at, if you have Marvin Harrison Jr., add him to this deep, this, this offense that was top 10 with Kyler Murray back under center, um, is, is that still going to, is that going to give you a chance to, to win football games automatically where, you know, I like the addition of Bilal Nichols. I like the addition of Justin Jones. And I like the addition of Sean Murphy Bunting and, and Mac Wilson. It, but has it elevated the defense enough to where they're going to be able to get enough stops to where if you add three first rounders to this team and you start and you say, well, you haven't addressed the edge, give me Dallas Turner at 11. 
We have an we we do need a wide receiver, a playmaking wide receiver. Here's Brian Thomas Jr. at 23, or here's uh, Lad McConkey. Uh, and then at you know, tw- what, don't don't skip. Don't Lad kind of McConkey at 23, I might walk out of Gila 27, River. 27, whatever, dude. Like, this is me at Gila River if they announce Lad McConkey at 23 of the Cardinals. Bye, everybody. Have no, a good night. This, this is this, later. Hey, this is Johnny. If if Lad McConkey does truly become a Cardinal, he says, you know, he's got a little Cooper Cup in him, doesn't he? He's going to be drinking <laughs> that, that glass. Don't question my football right integrity with that trash. Stop it. That's Cardinal. disrespectful. Stop it. As soon as Monty Austin for as soon as he leagues Lad, you're, you're going to be like, Xavier Leggett. You're bustling the, the uh, Lad Kool-Aid. Gross. 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 Don't Don't remind you of Wes Welker a little bit. <laughs> First catch in the NFL. Hey. Preseason. I'm going to say something right now. <laughs> Give me Cooper DeGene over Lad McConkey. Easily. Better football player. Also, Xavier Leggett's a better prospect than Lad McConkey. Not uh, even close. Sorry, I was I was in Mobile and there was two oh, very different was in Mobile. performances. It was Jack, two very see different my credential, performances. Bro? One was dropping. He was body bagging quit this cornerbacks. Show, he was body bagging cornerbacks, and Xavier Leggett was trying was? to get separation. Cooper was? Jean and Lad McConkey can both be good at football, right? Hey, that's a, update. Weird, that's a weird kind of statement. Yeah. Update: JJ like McCarthy like backed in the corner. Hello, fighting, hello. Fighting their way out. You guys slobbering all over Lad at the Senior Bowl. Gross. <laughs> I'm living in reality right now. Here's the reality. J.J. McCarthy, the odds to go fourth overall, they have dropped from over plus 500 to start last week. They are now under 300. The yeah. best odds they've seen, plus 250. Look out. Marvin Harrison Jr. still remains minus 200. Getting closer to closing that gap. Will we close the gap here with our trade packages? We're going to tell you that more, but first I want to tell you about my friends. Speaking of the Cardinals, Desert Financial Credit Union, the official Cardinals uh, credit union, the Arizona Cardinals of the Venerable family. I bank with Desert Financial Credit Union because they are elite, unlike Lad McConkey. They always deliver the goods. And uh, by goods, I mean checking, savings accounts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, investment options, and more. Thinking about maybe putting in a pool, you want a personal loan, right? You're thinking about taking out a credit card, booking a vacay, maybe building up some credit for a young one, just getting established. Desert Financial Credit Union is the place to be. They've got financial experts right now that are committed just to helping you with financial solutions tailored to help real people like me. I'm a real person. I bank at Desert Financial. You should too. Plus, if you're an Arizona sports fan, there's no better place to do your banking than Desert Financial Credit Union. The number one thing that I was looking for on top of elite customer service and great investment options, I want debit card machines, ATMs that I can access. I don't have to drive to Timbuktu to get my cash. There are a ton of locations here in the Valley, in the East Valley, with Desert Financial Credit Union to get my cash when I need it, right? Represent the Red Sea right now with the Arizona Cardinal Visa debit card. Check them out at desertfinancial.com. Slash Cardinals bow to get started. Uh, it's a it's one of the greatest times of the year, if not the greatest time of the year, with March Madness upon us. Uh, there were some great games already earlier today. They continue on into tonight and into to early tomorrow. Prize Picks is your best friend. You got to get on what Prize Picks is offering. More or less is the easiest way to start building your stack during March Madness. It's of course. Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy for, uh, sports platform in North America. Easiest way and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers deciding if it's more or less than you know two to six player stats and a combo and projections. You can just watch all the winnings roll in. Now, you got to check out what's going on with Prize Picks. All you have to do is log on to prizepicks.com slash phnx to use the promo code phnx for your first deposit match of 100 bucks. So you can put in 100 bucks to get 100 bucks back from Prize Picks to start just rolling along. You got a Suns game tonight. Just pick more or less as far as points scored by Devin Booker, Kevin or Kevin Durant. Check it out right now. It's so easy with the $100 price match guarantee prizepicks.com slash phnx use that code phnx pick more pick less it's that easy prize picks here's what i don't buy i do buy prize picks uh and i love them uh bonus code phnx well here's what i don't buy the narrative that monty austin ford is saying like we're open to a deal anywhere and people are decoding it like oh it could mean 27 that's not come on 
that's not what we're talking about. He has relationships with people, and I, I, I think it'd be specifically I, about four. No, no, no. But there are people that are saying, based on his comments, like that could mean anything. It could mean their other first rounder. That's that's not what's happening here. Like they're decoding number four right now. They're not laying the foundation to potentially move up or down from twenty seven with yeah. all those players still left up to chance. Like, can we put that to bed, please? I saw that like three times this morning on my Twitter timeline. People are like, he's taught he could be talking about twenty seven or thirty five. Guess what, guys? And I love MHJ. He's not talking about that. They're talking about pick four, whether or not they're going to deal the fourth overall pick. Yeah. Can we enter, can we enter reality, no. please? I asked him point blank. We locked eyes. He called me my name and he said, yeah, I'm getting a lot of action on the fourth overall pick. You're getting a lot of action on pick 60 in the third round, guys. <laughs> it's like, no, we're, well, I know people want Marvin. What he want... did to, to follow up was say that, you know, it, it's, it's hard enough to kind of forecast you know, four picks into the draft, let alone to get all the way down to 27. I just, that today, I was just like, come on, what are we doing here? Like, we barely know how the top 10 is going to go. You think somebody's calling us for like, hey, man, really want to talk to you about pick 27. <laughs> really looking at Michael Penix to come up. Like, no, no, no. Can we just let the first round progress? And then, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you move that pick. They're not having conversations 30 days before the draft about pick 27. Yeah. Like this video, by the way, you guys have been crushing it with the likes. Going to get back up over 400 today. We're dominating, leading PHNX Sports in likes for the week because of all of you. Before we get to these trade packages, Bo Brock, let's get to these super chats. Ethan kicking us off, $4.99. Uh, this cuts deep right here. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. I've watched enough Marv tape. I take him over three potential Pro Bowl players. Marv will be an all pro. Also, Monty not going to bat 100. I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. Like, mm -hmm. I, as much as I would love to believe Monty's going to go three for three, like, again, back to our early conversation, is anybody going to eclipse what Marvin does? It's a high bar and a lot of pressure on those players. So I'm with you, Ethan. It's it's a, it's why I don't I don't have any interest in the Vikings package because you're diluting it significantly. Yeah. yeah. It's just, like I guess they keep it simple. Just take Marv. It's like, we're, we're going to sift through all these packages, and some are going to, I guarantee it, just, spoiler alert, it's going to make you angry. Yeah, and I saw know, some of them. I hate yeah. some of them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to be the feeling. And then, <laughs> but but we should have just made one last package. It's like, just take Marv. Monty. Monty. Maybe we'll lock some eyes with me again. in there. Lock eyes with me again. Just Just take the six foot four playmaking wide receiver who hit 22 miles per hour on the field. Did you hear that Florio? Did you hear that Florio where he said, ah, maybe he, maybe he's a four, six guy. It's 22 miles per hour, a four, six guy, Florio. Get You're not, you can't be six, four and, and that kind of athlete and run a six, four. You just, you're not doing that. No, well, or it's coming from the, the the most non-athlete of all time. And Mike Florio, libertarian Sasquatch, 499 super chat. My dad and I were seriously talking about canning our season tickets if we pass on MHJ. What? Come Ticket on. renewals aren't getting cheaper. I'll still be a fan. Do what you got to do. Financial obligations, obviously. Listen, speaking from somebody, I have a nine-year-old son. He is ready to pre-order an MHJ jersey. He's he, he's ready to drive from the East Valley all the way to the team store to get a, a Marvin Harrison jersey just as soon as they're available. And it's going to be gutted if he sees us take somebody else so i'm right there with you a lot a lot on the line like people and it, it, it wouldn't even trans transpire into wins until the fall potentially they the cardinals could get a, a dub before the season starts with their fan base by taking marvin like that you can't dispute that they could have an all-time draft it could be the 2004 draft in terms of the impact that they get you know long term but like you can just buy yourself a lot of good equity by doing this. And that is not lost on Michael Bidwell. But here's the good news. If they don't make this move, you know unequivocally Michael Bidwell doesn't have, have a hand in the football operations because if it's up to him, <laughs> he's they're taking Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, like, you don't think he wants Marvin Harrison Sr. and a bunch of NFL vets hanging out and supporting this franchise and Marv helping them get primetime games and nationally televised events, going back to Mexico City. Like, they want all that. But if they pass on him, you'll know yeah. Austin Ford truly is running the show. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Libertarian Sasquatch, I feel you. I, I I just think it doesn't 
it's not going to, I know you want to see the exciting playmaking. I just, and I'm, I'm a Marv guy myself. Uh, just, are you? I'm, oh, come on. Like you yeah. said with Monty, like, are, are we, we, we have to, we can't just be, we, we got to emotionally hedge somehow. Um, let's keep it going with these super chats. Trenton Smith, 999. Here we go again. Passing on <laughs> MHJ and taking a haul is not the same on passing on Adrian Peterson or Suggs in the past. Good point. If we stick and pick up four and not take MHJ, it would be the same. Is that right? That's that's correct. Yes. The Cardinals took Levi Brown straight up over Adrian Peterson, right? The the Terrell Suggs thing, they they just they passed on Suggs to take Bryant Johnson and Calvin Pace. So I the Cardinals have Rod never Graves been did that deal. And here's a little nugget about Rod Graves. He didn't watch tape. What did he do? <laughs> it's just, he wasn't like Monty Austin for it is in his, he's just watching scouring uh, tape and, and watching players, um, you know, and, and how they, they perform, whether it's free agency or, or draft prospects. It, Rod Graves was not known as somebody that, that watched a lot of tape. Yeah. I, it's a different I think guy calling the shots. The Cardinals, can I just say this? They're in uncharted mm -hmm. territory to get these kind of trade packages historically. Like, we're living in an age now, historically, like, they needed a quarterback always. So they just mm -hmm. take one. They're living in an age now where, like, they've been bad. So they have a top pick, but they have Kyler Murray, who's still a top 10 quarterback, in my opinion. So they can auction these picks off, right? And they need it because Steve Kime took a you know, a wrecking ball to this roster figuratively. So there's a, there's just a lot of areas they have to improve upon, but that doesn't mean you pass on Marv if he's unequivocally the best option. Jeremy Bailey with my favorite avatar, $5 super chat. Mm. I think stick and pick a four, then trade up from 27 for another premium player, MHJ and Jerzon Newton. Absolutely. Jared Verse, Arnold, the cornerback, uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, the interior offensive lineman from Oregon. Yes, please sign us up. Pat, you could... You could take one of your third rounders and go up from 27 to 23, 22 and, and get a premium defensive lineman. I still think a tackle is very much in play based on what we've heard. So I, if you ask Jeremy Cardinal fans, I would say nine out of 10 would prefer that. I'd prefer that. I, I'd like something to kind of lock that in. I'd, I'd love for, for the Vikings to to make a move and, and stop being uh, a team that is always is going to be looming until April 25th. It's not going to happen. Though. No, no. I love you, and I want that for you. <laughs> and this, I like you. Okay, you're. Yeah, you're, I'm. I want. I want good things for good you. Guy. That's not happening. Yeah. The Vikings are not, unless it's with the Cardinals. The Vikings aren't trading pre-draft. So if you see an, a, a notification on your phone or on TV, the Vikings have made a trade. Guess what? Get get a vomit bag out. Uh, <laughs> Tony, ten dollar super chat. Great show, guys. <laughs> Definitely the smartest Arizona Cardinal coverage. We need heading into the draft. Well, thank you so much, Tony. And we appreciate the super chat and the support on that level. The bottom line is that Monty is going to make the move that makes this team the best it can be, Bo. And that's that's what the with with people like you know, not trying to call out to libertarian Sasquatch because he's not alone in feeling like, hey, if this team's gonna to make this polarizing move, it's it's in a way kind of turning their back on what the fan base is asking for. Um I, I agree more with Tony. Like it's 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 you got to take a leap of faith with Monty Austin Fort that's that's shown the ability to find talent in this draft. And when you load him up with even more picks, I think that he's going to address more needs that this this roster desperately needs filled. Like right now, your your edge rushers, your outside linebackers are this the status quo. The same group that over the last six games had one token stack, uh, sack when Justin Fields stepped out of bounds at the right before the line of scrimmage. That was the one sack over the last six games. Can I, I just say, you too, I watched those Chicago highlights. Um, the Cardinals' front seven is was bad at the end of the year. It's, it, and was. It, and it's not, it was. It's improved, but it's, it needs a lot of help. Fields, yeah. Justin Fields just basically did whatever he wanted against the Cardinals. And he said in the post-game press conference, he said the defensive line was too slow. Now you add in you know, an athletic defensive line like Jones from the Bears and Bilal Nichols, like things have gotten better. Uh, and they added a, a, just a monster of a man in Tonga it, that's going to probably be their starting nose. Um, you're, you're, you're automatically like you raised the level of play, but you still like you, you want to get that war daddy, don't you? Don't you want to add like Byron Murphy the second? 
who people are just raving about how he is, he's, how he's built physically. Um, like that, uh, in order to get that player, like you're not going to take him at four. He's not in consideration there. And he's probably not in consideration at 27. I don't care what yeah. Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft says. You bring up a great point that I think needs to be emphasized in this McVay Shanahan era. The Cardinals have had elite receivers like a, like a D hop. They haven't won anything, right? They've, they've won, they've beaten the Rams once and they've beaten the Niners a, a couple times, but it hasn't meant anything. They haven't won a division title. Here's what happens at the end of the day. Those two franchises and Seattle to a lesser degree are consistently out physically in the Arizona Cardinals. That's, that's, you can't even dispute that. That's a fact. That's an undisputed fact. The Cardinals at the line of scrimmage against McVay especially and Shanahan get pushed around. So what are you going to do to make how, – how does Marvin help that? Well, he doesn't. So you better be damn sure that your free agents, 27, 35, your three picks in the third round, can expedite that. But those are the conversations sure as shit that Austin Ford and Gannon are having right now. Like, I love Marvin Harrison Jr. What, what's going to prevent the L.A. Rams from lining it up with their three premier interior offensive linemen and kicking your ass again, personnel-wise, not scheme-wise? How are you going to prevent – Nick Bosa and company and Javon Hardgraves from disrupting your offensive line. The, the Cardinals line of scrimmage play. I think their offensive line overachieved last year. The defensive line was the worst in the NFL and you play in a division fair or not with, I think two hall of fame head coaches. So I it just, the Cardinals want to win with line of scrimmage play, which is why they're considering trading out of four to up that. Like I was talking to somebody today and everybody's screaming and yelling for, okay, if you trade down from four, you got to get a receiver. I don't think that that's going to be their first inclination. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be defensive line, edge rusher, or potentially, guys, another offensive tackle, and they'll just figure it out. But, like, you can't tell me right now, cut and dry, you're beating Shanahan and McVay with, a, with an elite receiver. Like, that helps, but yeah. we know that this game with 53 men, it's hard, and you got to have big people to push people around. And look at the teams that have beaten the Rams and the Niners, right? Right. The Chiefs, I mean, it's Mahomes, but it's elite defensive line play. It's great offensive line play. Last year with Philadelphia, I mean, I, against the Niners, I know they had A.J. Brown and company. What the what the Eagles do to the Niners in that game? They beat the shit out of them up front. That's what the Cardinals want to do. Yeah. They got a long way to go before they get there. What did the Rams do this offseason? What were their big acquisitions? Two interior offensive linemen that they already added with a draft pick that they hit on, a guy that you and I coveted and Steve Avila at a TCU. Yeah. And the interior of their offensive line got better. They bolstered it. They kept yeah. Dockton and they added another one uh, via free agency and threw some money at him. And, you know, whether it's uh, you know, where they ran for 140 plus yards in the second half, they just said, oh, this game's a little too close for our comfort. We're just going to impose our will up front offensively and just push them around. And they did that. And like, did you get a little bit better on the defensive line? Absolutely. I love I, I really yeah. like Justin Jones no and, I like and, Nichols and Tonga, but you're, it's going to take more than that. Like, especially that the teams in your division are upgrading there. Ollie jumping in with a 499 super chat. Um, maybe a three way trade is more likely than we think. I feel like the Chargers would want to trade down far more than Arizona, and Minnesota can guarantee McCarthy at four, MHJ to Arizona at five. I mean, the, the three way trade that was proposed to us by one of our super chats two days ago, it made a whole lot of sense to me, but it's just you've never seen it. In anything no. that resembled it in NFL history. Well, and it comes down to like, I think the Chargers would take Marvin over a trade down if the Cardinals are already trying to manipulate it. Like the, the Chargers are here to do one of two things. They're going to take advantage of the Cardinals trade down. And if the Cardinals don't trade down, they're going to trade down. Like they are, the Chargers are waiting for the Cardinals to make a move. Right. And like Harbaugh, it came out today, like wanted to re-sign Keenan Allen. They couldn't come to an agreement. So it's just no. like, they need a receiver. So I the Cardinals and the and the Chargers are in very similar spots. They've got, I think, good coaches. Harbaugh's an elite head coach. They've got franchise quarterbacks and they got rosters where they need a bunch of young talent, right? And they moved off some expensive guys. Keenan Allen, DeAndre Hopkins, right? Mike Williams, Isaiah Simmons, former first round picks didn't work out short term, long term. So 
I, I it's funny. Like you could you could sell the Chargers and the Cardinals with a lot of different scenarios. I think, but but primarily, and, and Marv continues to be the exception to this rule. How are the Chargers? How do they want to build their team? From we know the, how they want to do it. Yeah, yeah. From the trenches out, Rudy one ninety nine super chat. Marvin Harrison Jr. That's it. I I appreciate that, Rudy. Yeah. Uh, I also like a GM that that's willing to to go down every path. Leave no stone unturned uh, as far as roster building. And then Libertarian Sasquatch jumping back in. 199 Super Chat. Still going to be a fan. Just going to be one for free. It's not bad. Being a fan for free is great. No F's given saying Johnny's changing the sides by, uh, by the sounds of it. I'm not. I would take him. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm trying I to. I would take him. Both of us would take Are him. Are you taking calls though? If you're a general man, if, if you're wearing Monty Austin Ford shoes, I the entire know. rest of the month yeah, of March. I mean, what's, April. The, you, what's the harm of taking? There's no harm in taking. There is calls. no harm. But I, I, yeah, due diligence, Rudy, I respect for sure. I'm not changing sides, but I like, I've watched the team my entire adult life as a young man. Like, I know what they face in this. You're not playing in the NFC South where it's patty cake football and Baker Mayfield <laughs> and Mike Evans can you, win you the division and you can, and you can host a home playoff game. You're in a division with the elite, not the elite of the NFC West, the elite in the NFL that the, that the conference goes to, goes through. The conference every year goes through McVay or Shanahan. So what are you doing to combat that? And I'm posing this to everybody because this is what the this is how the Cardinals think. We know that this is how they think. So if they make a trade and everybody's upset about it, that the, we're, we're trying to lay the foundation of, okay, this we understand, we don't agree with it but we understand where you're coming from, right? We watched DeAndre Hopkins not help you win anything. Now, that was in part because of Cliff and Vance Joseph and Steve Kine, but, like, didn't lead to championships, didn't lead to NFC West titles. So I, I'm I'm with everybody. I would take Marvin over any trade package that's within the realm of possibility, and we've teased it enough. Let's get to some of these trade packages, Bo. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, we'll start. So CBS Sports did a great job. I'm really breaking these down and you can you can you you can just go across the internet and you're going to find a lot of crap out there. Uh yeah. one I saw it was Bleacher Report um some guy was just putting together I think he was just going based solely off the chart where this guy created his own uh uh just number system. Yeah. And uh let me get the writer. So RJ White is the guy who's who's the one who put this all together. So credit to him and and all the hard work he put in and he put up uh so he's got two teams here, the Vikings and yeah. the New York Giants. And it's two very different scenarios. It's like okay. the Giants are at six. So you could still trade down and still be in a in striking distance of a very good player that's that's comparable to a Marvin Harrison Jr. Or you're 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 trading down to eleven to where you're without you're not in striking distance and you're gonna have to do maybe some maneuvering and get back up the board like Monty did last year, or you're sticking and picking with all your picks. So let's start here. He, he kind of did it baseline value, medium value, and competitive market value. So okay. baseline is where it just starts, right? And if you want to have the, go, the, the negotiations begin here. And then there's the medium value where it's pretty much going to be what you're going to see is is the numbers, the 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 as far as the numbers are going to be similar as far as where the teams are. It's going to come out kind of even. And then the the competitive is going to be where the Cardinals, it sways in their favor as far as the score goes. So let's look at the baseline value for okay. these Vikings packages. Now, let me put a disclaimer up first. You may fall ill seeing some of these packages because it's okay. something that you would hope Monty Osfort wouldn't even entertain. Baseline we know value, Monty's please. shrewd. Monty's not going to take any kind of kind package. Yeah. Baseline package, please, Damon Dog. Vikings, so we've got the baseline value. So the Cardinals would get the 11th overall pick, 23rd overall pick, and then a fourth rounder and a seventh rounder. Then this is overall 577 point value return to where the Vikings would receive the fourth overall pick. Johnny, I don't even need you to say it. No thanks, right? Yeah, and is this is this including a QB tax or no? 
Um, this is just based on his point system and basically picks what those the picks that the Cardinals would receive would be equal to the picks that the Vikings receive. Yeah, I think he got his point system conversion chart at the DVD bin at Walmart, and we're just <laughs> going to go ahead and bypass that. And okay. uh, let's see the next one here. All I don't right. want to see – if I see a seventh rounder in any of these deals, I know I can't take it seriously. Okay. Here's here's another one that's baseline value. So you can throw that one out and say, what else you got? 11th overall pick, 23rd overall pick, and a 2025 first-round pick that you and I have been calling the baseline and then throw some change in there, maybe a day three pick. And the Vikings receive the fourth overall pick and then uh, 66 with his actually a third a round third. pick. Yep. And then a 2025 second round pick. I'm out on that one as well. But this is another situation where the point value is equal. This is like me looking at the housing market uh, with 7.5% interest rates. It's garbage. <laughs> I don't want any part of it. Brian in the chat, GameStop value. That's the perfect yeah. analysis. <laughs> hey, I got four games to trade in. Yeah, here's here's your two dollars. I got a PS5 to trade in. Fifteen bucks, good yeah. for you. Uh, uh, yeah, fifteen dollar GameStop gift card. You can use it here. It's great. Uh, let's continue on here. Okay, let. So you guys are out at baseline. It's and Michael Lombardi was saying this on McAfee the other day. Is like the GMs they they don't they don't go to make and wheel and deal here. They they do it to beat the chart. So as far as yeah. having even numbers. It, the GMs aren't interested in I guarantee Imani Osfort at this point is not interested in having an even trade uh, w- according You're to the You're coming chart. to us. You are yeah. coming to the Cardinals on your knees with your hands together saying, gift us our franchise quarterback for Kevin O'Connell for the next 10, 15 years so we can salvage the relationship with Justin Jefferson. We're doing you a favor by entertaining it. We're not giving you picks back. I don't take you seriously if we if the Cardinals are giving you picks. All right, can, can competitive or let's get to the medium market here. Uh, Cardinals get the 11th, 23rd, 2025 first. Oh my God, these are just, these are so bad. Yeah, so let's get away from this one. And they would get the the Vikings. We get the fourth overall pick and a pair of the Cardinals three third round. The Cardinals picks. aren't trading picks, by the way, from this year's draft for picks in the next year for a right. draft that is not as good, and then you're diluting it. Of every round that you go, this is trap. Right. CBS Sports. What is happening over there? They used to be a reputable <laughs> industry. Competitive market deal. Uh, so this is this sways nearly a hundred points in the favor of the Cardinals. I got a sense already. My co-host is going to disagree. Eleventh overall pick, twenty-third overall pick, and a twenty twenty-five first for the fourth overall pick and a third rounder. Uh, it's seven twenty-nine points to six forty. So if what, the Cardinals are dead set on making a deal, I could see this being a possibility. It's incorrect, and Cardinal fans would be furious. 66 overall is, is their highest third rounder. So you would basically be getting two, two firsts. You'd have the same number of picks this year, but you'd have two firsts and a first next year. Like this, this is the baseline for what I think if the Cardinals are dead set on trading that they would ever accept. But yeah. Why would you take that? We've got one deal from the the New York Giants, Damon Dog. If we could see the G Men's deal uh, to go down from four to six, so the Cardinals would receive the sixth overall pick. They get a fourth rounder and a twenty twenty five second round pick, while they would give the fourth overall pick to the Giants. It's not that good enough. Even either. trade according to this. No, that's incorrect. Um, we would need at minimum a day two pick. The Giants have a second and a third rounder. You're yeah. not getting out of any deal with Austin Ford or this podcast without <laughs> opening the wallet. And I think, uh, these, these I are think cute. Gonna hire Johnny. This is Harry like coupons. This is like those coupon warrior shows where people bust out, <laughs> like, you know, make people wait 20 years in line while they get all their coupons. We're not doing any of these deals. This is just welcome to reality where you have to overpay for your franchise quarterback. You do not get to swindle the Cardinals out of a potential Hall of Fame level wide receiver prospect for a fucking fourth round pick. Get get out of here with that. Like all these people have personal agendas with the Giants or the Vikings. Can we just say that out loud? Very few people in the media outside of this podcast have mm-hmm. agendas with this franchise. Do what's best for the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Albert Breer is a good guy because he loves Marvin. And he wants Marvin here with Paris. But like all of these people 
basically just like, this is fair, right? Cardinals just take whatever. Your roster is not very good. Right. A fourth round pick. I get you get a two next year. There is no reality in which you do not empty the checkbook. All your top picks this year are coming to Arizona. If you're the Vikings or the New York Giants. Yeah. Um, Speak for the fan base here. I know. No, no Cardinal fan would accept any of those. No, not a None single of one of those. Not a single one of them. And, and this shows on, on record that when you start to look at it in, in the one deal that it only makes sense is 11, 23, future first. Yep. And then probably a third round pick. A sweetener. A little sweetener. And and not in, in the Cardinals give the fourth overall pick and nothing else. Nothing else. And why are we giving you anything? Right. You're coming up for your franchise quarterback. That's your goal. And we're not question, giving you picks if question question other from the Vikings is like, well, that doesn't that doesn't add up. You say we're not we're not going based off anything. We're going off of you got the quarterback tax. I have the fourth overall pick. You want it. This is what it's going to take. Take your it, chart and crumple it up. Throw it in the garbage. We're 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 negotiating here. This is this trash. Starts. It's trash. I'm going to tell you right now too. No, con- I don't want to have any conversations from the losers with the New York Giants who are irrelevant and have no direction unless you call me up right now and say it's six and our second rounder to start the conversation. That you have. That's the. Uh, Future ones, be damn. The Giants have to surrender at least six in a second rounder for me to at least pick up the phone. And then, okay, kick in a fourth, maybe a future fourth. Maybe maybe we got a deal, right? Because you get another top, you get a second rounder to go with 35. Now you're cooking with gas and you get Malik Neighbors at six. And Cardinal fans at least can stomach that. The Vikings have a much tougher sell for Cardinal fans. And I think, again, I think Austin Ford knows that. 11 is a long way to go. Mm-hmm. And there, you leave a lot up to chance, Bo Brock, from saying, oh, we can definitely trade up again. You want to package 11 and 35? I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. To come up to like eight or nine? Guess what the teams that are picking in front of you at 11? Uh, let's look at, I'm going to pull this up here in real time. Look at the top 10 in the draft. Here's the draft order, folks. Guess what the Bears need? Receiver. Guess what the Jets need? Receiver. Guess what the Falcons need? receiver guess what the titans need receiver tackle all these teams have the same needs at you why would they trade with you they're not going to trade with you you go to 11 you succumb to not a blue chip prospect roma dunsey malik neighbors joe alt fuaga dallas turner all that is left up to chance so i don't i don't buy this well you can package 11 and another pick number one that sounds terrible i don't want to do that at all the giants in my opinion if you're austin ford are the perfect trade partner because if you're the Giants, you don't have to mortgage your future past this draft. And if you're the Cardinals, you still get your preference of everybody not named Marvin Harrison Jr. Joey Charles jumping in with a 199 super chat. It's informative too uh, as well. So let's get to, to Joey's super chat here. Uh, Trey Lance pre- trade package, but with a 2024 20, second. I mean, that that's kind of what reset the market as far as what the cost was. It, it's a similar rise up the draft board. Um, w- what the the Niners paid to get up with uh, what at the time was it was it the the Dolphins or was it Philly? Uh, the it Dolphins. Dolphins. The Dolphins moved down with the Niners and then jumped back up right. with Philly. With yeah. Philly. People are saying in the chat, like, there's no quarterback tax anymore. What? Of course there is. It's just, it's, it, the Vikings have shown you their cards. Mm-hmm. They have said, we have no answer. We're not comfortable with anything going on right now. We're getting more ammo to make sure everybody knows we're, the Vikings are basically telling you, we're serious about trading up. Please listen to us. Right. They can't, the Vikings aren't slow playing this. You're trading up for an extra first round five weeks before the draft. Those are the big neon lights <laughs> Austin Ford's telling them about. Hello, hello, make us a deal. That's what they're doing. You have right. the leverage in that situation. Yes. When when you you want to go to the concert, but then you click uh, check out for your tickets outside of game time. If you want to go to the show, you got to pay the fees. Otherwise, you know what? You're you're just gonna have to go scout the streets uh, or look on the streets for somebody to to sell you tickets because. 
you're not going to be able to find them and you're not going to be able to secure them until somebody else gets a little bit um, uneasy with their own drafts board as the dominoes begin to fall on April 25th. David, CHGO fan here. Are you guys really considering trading down? Bo and I aren't. The Cardinals are. The Arizona Cardinals are, are absolutely considering trading down. So much so that the Vegas odds for Marvin Harrison Jr. have plummeted from about three, minus 300 to minus 180. And uh, J.J. McCarthy is slowly approaching plus 200 to be the fourth overall pick. Is it going to stay that way? I don't know. Could go in either direction. But right now, we're about 30 days away from the NFL draft. And uh, 60-40, I would say, right now. Cardinals draft Marvin or trade down. 60-40. I wish that was a little bit more uh, skewed. I was hoping more 70-30, 80-20 to make take MHJ. Hey, um, and it, real quick, Vegas yeah. told us last year, well in advance, that Will Anderson Jr. was going to be the third overall pick, and we didn't buy it. And he still was. He just wasn't to the Cardinals. Yeah. And he was like minus 400. And we were like, well, that's not happening. We have the intel. It still happened. Yeah. Like Ve Vegas knows. Vegas knows. Was was Marvin right now minus 200, you said? Minus 180. Minus what? It was like minus three something earlier this week. Yeah. Minus 180 to go four? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. Or is it the team? Is it the, the position? Is it fourth overall or is it the team? Team. No, fourth overall. Okay. JJ McCarthy was once like plus five something. He's plus 200 now to go fourth overall. Closing in, closing in on even money. JJ McCarthy, the fourth overall pick. What do you think about that, gentlemen? What do you think I about that? It. I've never heard anything more. You feel a little, you feel a little, uh, le like, like maybe you should have gotten in on JJ McCarthy or earlier this week. I feel like I, I want to get it on Marv. The value, because you thought it was only going one direction. It was at minus 280 a Here, week ago. Here's the problem with that, Damon. Is that they don't get Marv, and then you lose money. That's a double blow. Yeah, there's no emotional I, hedging there. I sent Bo Brock an emotional heads earlier this week. I did not <laughs> place it. I'm going to tell you what the emotional heads was, though. It was, where is it? I got to find it on my phone. It was a may or may not have been a hundred dollars on JJ McCarthy. Where was it? JJ McCarthy, a hundred dollars plus three twenty five plus four seventy five would have paid out almost six hundred dollars. I didn't place it because I don't I don't want to bet any money on Marvin not being a cardinal. But there's that's that's your emotional hedging for you. Yeah, you're a good man for not selling your soul with that bet. I'm an emotional guy. And this is an emotional show this week. Uh, but you know what's going to help me is just to drown my emotional sorrows with some some burros here in the Valley. And we're going to hook you up. So some burros, your premier Mexican cuisine here in Arizona, actually voted Arizona's most loved Mexican restaurant. They're going to hook you up, as are we here at PHNX. 20% uh, off your order for the entire month of March. So you want to dabble like my family does multiple times in a given week or month. Uh, use PHNX's bonus code for 20% off. Hey, throw a fiesta with some burros. Let them do the cooking for you. If you've got birthday parties, graduations, big or small, some burros is the place to go for their, their cooking and their catering. And they got everything you need to feed a crowd. Uh, they've got a taco bar, which is fantastic. Margaritas to go. Dabble, but dabble responsibly. And then, of course, their guacamole is exquisite. On top of that, they got locations all throughout the valley, right down here in uh, South Chandler for me. But they've got Flagstaff all the way through the valley, East Valley, West Valley, whatever you want to dabble, do so with our friends at Some Burrows. Check them out online and a good year, Peoria, North Phoenix, SomeBurrows.com to find one nearest to you. Again, 20% off your order, up to $100 when you use the bonus code PHNX. At checkout for the entire month of March. Available in restaurants, drive throughs or even when you order online. Uh, not available for third parties, though. But just check them out. Sumburrows.com, Bo. Yeah, and when you're uh, on the road, you just picked up some great food. Just stop in to maybe Circle K. and You can get yourself this new promotion from the Arizona Lottery. They've got their Arizona Adventure Lottery tickets now. It's introducing this new ticket and promotion called the Arizona Adventure. And there's three ways that you can win big. One, you can just get the tickets. You can scratch off and win up to $50,000 
or you could check in at these geolocated adventures in 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. You can check it out. And if you check in, you got de- destination coordinates on their website. You can enter tickets online for a chance to win $1 million cash and Arizona travel prices. Arizona Lottery says proceeds from ticket sales provide environment environmental conservation among other important initiatives across the state. Arizona Lottery, not just about playing games, but it's about supporting the communities that in the state that it resides in here in the great state of Arizona, playing games, winning prizes, visit azadventure.com for more information and how you can take an adventure for a chance to win a million dollars in cash and AZ travel prizes. Uh, let's check out some super chats here. And then we're going to check out an updated look at the Arizona Cardinals top 30 visits. Um, I like this from Jalen Blair. Cause it's a good question. $5. We appreciate you friend of the program. Serious question. When was the last time a team picked twice, yet alone three times in the first round and hit on all of them? Well, I'll start. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs had two first-round picks after trading Tyreek Hill. They got one Trent McDuffie, and then they got George Karlofkis, two anchors of their defense for their Super Bowl. And then dating back to, I think, the mid-2000s, Jim Harbaugh, uh, the year after he got there, excuse me, the year before, uh, they had multiple first-rounders. They got their uh, right tackle. And his name escapes me. And then they got Mike Ayupati. They drafted two stud Pro Bowl offensive linemen, I believe, in the teens. Uh, the same year, I think the Cardinals probably took a bust. Whatever year they took Mike Ayupati in the first round, they got two uh, premier offensive linemen that spearhead their Super Bowl run. So those are two off the top of my head. But there's probably many instances where it hasn't worked out, Bo. There, the two the two instances of three picks that I that come to mind for me are when the Browns picked the, that cornerback from Oklahoma State, I'm forgetting his name now. He was supposed to be really oh good. Was a he's huge a buzz. Bug. Yeah. yeah, he's top five. Johnny Manziel, or was oh, it Brandon God. Whedon? It was one of the two of them. No. And then I think it was Johnny. And football. then that D tackle from uh, Washington. And Dolphins did in 2020. The Dolphins did, and they picked Noah Igbenogany. <laughs> he's an absolute bum. And Austin Jackson wasn't very good. He's decent these days. And then Tua. He's an average right tackle. So the Giants went 2019. This was when they traded OBJ. They took Dexter Lawrence. Uh, they took DeAndre Baker, who was not, out of the league. Yeah, not that great. Didn't he? He had like a legal and then they issue. Took, they took Daniel Jones with their top pick in that draft. Raiders in 2019 had three picks. They traded Khalil Mack uh, and Amari Cooper, which was crazy that they got a first for him. Cleveland Farrell, bust. Uh, Max, uh, no, Max Crosby was later. He wasn't a first rounder. Josh Jacobs, and I'm looking for the third <coughs> Jonathan Abram. That was a bust. Lions have had a lot of instances where they've had two first rounders and they've hit on about half of them. So last year they had they got Jameer Gibbs and they took that off ball linebacker. Uh, one year they took Stafford and Javid Best. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dominic Kinsu and Brandon Pettigrew was mixed in there. So it is Viking Sheriff Floyd, Xavier Road, Cordero Patterson. Woof. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's like tough. Like, one. and here's the thing, <laughs> like the odds are going to tell you that you're going to hit on. If you have two, you're going to hit on one of the two. Well, the, the Browns had Miles Garrett, Jabril Peppers, who's not great, but David and Joku tur- turned out to be a little bit better. Jabril Peppers is pretty good these yeah. days. So those are three. Oh, well, Joku's awesome. They just, yeah. The Giants ruined them because they're a dumb franchise. Um, but yeah, it's a good it's a good discussion. Like if you if the Cardinals get three ones and two of them hit, it's a good trade. And the and the other one's just a, a solid contributor on the roster, but still two out of three. I mean, it's asking a lot, especially if you assume Marvin's going to hit both. Yeah, Deuce jumping in with a ten dollars super chat. This isn't Kime as our GM. Just be like the players and trust the process. Unlike Kime, they know what they're doing. If they don't draft MHJ, you know there was a reason for it. Great job, you tune. Deuce, the Thank number you, one uh, Clayton Tune fan on this planet. And uh, appreciate his I, Clayton Tune enthusiasm. Remain steadfast in his support for the former fifth-round pick. Uh, let's get into I, the top thirty visits real quick. Hang on, I pray for tune because Desmond Ritter got a single digit number today, so look out. Number nine. Yeah, number nine is such a disaster number. That's like that's a curse. I can't believe somebody else didn't grab that. 
We're we're letting Desmond Ritter rock a single digit. I don't know about that. The quarterback. No, you can rep anything. What do you, you want know. him like fifty seven? No, like give him like <laughs> seventeen or something. Who is that one team? Is there like a college team whose quarterback was wearing like twenty eight or something like that? That's sweet. I like that. No, Michigan yeah, did cool. it one year. They had a guy who was like wearing ninety seven. Desmond, I like I I don't care what Desmond Ritter what number he wears because I never want to see Desmond Ritter. Uh, we have mm-hmm. one more super chat, then we'll get to the top top visits. Nine ninety nine Noah. Fans need to stop thinking of it as three first bow. We'd only be adding two additional firsts. I agree with that. With one of them being a watered down draft next year, absolutely not worth it. Give K one his wide receiver one for decades. You're hundred percent right. Like four to 11 is a huge jump. Mm -hmm. And then 23, you don't know what's going to be there. You already have 27. And then, yeah, nobody, nobody is going to care about, a 2025 first from the Vikings after we all just waited through a painful year with watching Houston's pick. Like it has to be three first plus something else. And that's a lot to ask of the Vikings, but you got to pay a lot. You wake up from a nightmare and you're just like, Oh, I want to do that again. Going right back to, can I I go back to sleep and and have another one? Uh, That's what it would be with going from the Texans to the Vikings that are in a decent place roster wise. They, they certainly built their roster and free agency to stay within striking distance of contention. Um, all right. So Arizona Cardinals, we're getting some Intel from various reports about, you know, who their top 30 visits are. Um, and the Arizona Cardinals right now, we've compiled this list as far as top 30 visits that they've had or have planned there's seven players on this, and I, I'm i not sure. Weinfuss, Josh Weinfuss from ESPN mentioned Marvin Harrison Jr., but I don't know if that's confirmed. I don't know if he was confirming that Marvin Harrison Jr. was doing a top 30 visit. You would assume, uh, since he didn't really do a pro day and work out, they did obviously talk at the Combine in depth, um, and, and he really impressed the Cardinals organization at that point that they would want to get a little bit more from him. But we've got their top 30 visits here. Do we have that? Uh, graphic here with the the seven players. So, Brendan Rice, of course, the son of another Hall of Fame wide receiver, the, the goat, and Jerry Rice. You got Dylan Johnson, running back out of Washington. Nice uh, kind of uh, strong back. Uh, Nehemiah Pritchard, Pritchett out of Auburn, the cornerback. Christian Boyd, who's a hot commodity out of Northern Iowa, interior defensive line. And then two wide receivers, two different profiles. Jacob Cowing, who's about 5'9", uh, at a U of A, uh, but he's a slot receiver. And then you got Xavier Worthy, who's just kind of a – he's about 5'11", he's 160 soaking wet, but he's a burner. He's ran a 5'2", or 4'2", 140. Uh, I mean, again, they're doing their homework on guys that are going to go second round of the draft at receiver. Like, that, I look at this, and that's what I see. Like – the other three prospects are, are day three prospects, in my opinion. Brendan Rice and especially Xavier Worthy, not Jay Cowing, are, are going day two, if not day one. And so, like, again, put the pieces together. You're doing your homework, potentially, if you pass on a receiver at four or if you want to double dip, which is what I hope they do. But, like, I, Xavier Worthy plays outside, right? Yeah. Brendan Rice, does he play slot or does he play outside? I think he could play. He, I play would either outside at six two six three. Yeah, so a little like, more physical. Yeah. What are you What are you telling us? I think those, he profiles more. Visits. Yeah, I think he profiles a little bit more of a, as a Z than an X. And like, and again, I want to make something clear for everybody: top thirty visits. You're not just doing your homework. You only get so many of those. Yeah. Those are guys that you are 30. very serious about looking at. <laughs> so it's like, why are they looking at day two receivers? or fringe first round receivers and using a top 30 visit on them. What is that telling us? Might not take a receiver at four, might not make a pickup. They've got four guys in the room and they've got double digit picks. I mean, and they haven't, they outside of Chris Moore, they haven't done anything at the position this off season. Here's their top 30 visits from last year. Tyree Wilson, Paris Johnson, Nolan Smith, Jackson Smith, Jigba, Quinton Johnston, Darnell Wright, uh, Broderick Jones, uh, Steve Avila, Garrett Williams. Like when I look at who they took out of this, Paris Johnson Jr. Now this hit rate I think is actually pretty high uh, for most top thirty visits. Garrett Williams they obviously took. Um, they took Keytrail Clark and they ended <coughs> up signing El Manning. 
So, I mean, four of those guys they've had they had on their roster at one point. They liked, I mean, there's a good chance these top 30 guys, and they we know they liked a couple of the backs that they were going to consider with the Garrett Williams or the Michael Wilson pick, but they just weren't available. They got drafted right in front of them. Like the kid who went to, yeah. I think, Tampa, like he, he was gone. And so, I don't know, man. I, I I wouldn't feel great if I wanted Marvin and I'm looking at that. Which I Jacksonville don't, Tank, I do. Tank Bigsby. Yeah, they wanted Tank Bigsby. I'm going to tell you right now, like I looking at that, every time I see, oh, we're working out a fringe first round receiver, is that somebody that they're going to take at 27 or 35 as their first receiver? Well, none in the of the guys' profile is. Uh, Xavier Worthy probably does. No. You probably, you, you don't think Xavier Worthy profiles no. is like pick 35? Uh-uh. Maybe at, at highest 35. Uh, when there is a... Mitchell is a much better prospect who's who went to Texas. He's not even the best prospect at the position out of his own school. He's just fast. I, I don't disagree with you. I'm, You'd be the, shocked if Worthy went in the first round? Yes, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. Al Davis is not, he's not alive any longer. Damon and I live in the reality of teams where they're going... There's, there's going to be like five receivers going in the top 15, 17. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a free-for-all. And then you're going to be left with scraps. So if you're left with scraps and you're not trading up, you're going to have to overdraft somebody potentially. Not overdraft, but Charlie, our friend from the Charger fandom, he's back. Dollar ninety nine. Odds are fifty fifty. Arizona trades down now. Uh, elaborate on that. You don't have to use a super chat, Charlie. Uh, where that information is coming from? I said sixty forty on this podcast. Now, I mean, it's just every passing day it gets it gets a little bit more serious. Look at look at Bo. He looks dejected. Are you all right? No, I, we got a, a great super chat here. Very generous. Twenty five dollars super chat. Thank you, David Lee Sears. Uh, any relation to Dave Sears, Cardinals assistant general manager? I, I don't know if his middle name if is. If it Lee, is, but... we welcome you, David. <laughs> multiple multiple team trade. My bad if the Cardinals move off MHJ. So, I mean, I I, I don't know if. We very you don't see multiple team trades in the NFL, but it could be multiple deals. I mean, it could be. I mean, Monty's done it once. He went down to outside the top ten, looking in, and try right back into it to get up to six. So it's, it's um, not unprecedented. So thank as we wait, that, by the way, David Lee, appreciate that. Yes, thank you so much for supporting the show in that way. So this is from John Frasella, uh, and also Benjamin Albright co-signing on this. This is breaking news from earlier today that we hadn't touched on. When it comes, when it, well, it came out the Giants are upset, someone leaked J.J. McCarthy. My sources were saying they were even more interested in Jane Daniels. However, it's become clear that the Giants, uh, to the Giants, that Daniels is definitely going to the into the top three of the draft. Thus, their attention has turned completely to J.J. McCarthy. So the New York Giants want J.J. McCarthy, as do the Minnesota Vikings. And Monty Osford with his feet up saying, come with your best offers. Let's have a conversation. Big neon sign open. You think you think the Giants think the Giants? We want a quarterback that other teams want. Here, here's a fourth rounder. You think that's happening? Like those CBS <laughs> idiotic proposals? No. Yeah. Come with your uh, best offer. Is the best we could do. A fourth rounder. It's like, okay, well, Vikings, uh, they can beat that like, by a lot. Yeah. Goodbye. Never call us again. <laughs> Dave Gettleman still work for the Giants? That's what I would say. Is this Gettleman at an Arby's? No, never call this number again. Curly fries and never call me again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a fourth rounder and some Arby's sauce. You know where there's not going to be Arby's, but there is going to be some elite cuisine is at our draft party. at Gila River Resorts and Casinos, April 25th. We are reaching, approaching max capacity on the downside of max capacity. So there's still tickets available. But you got to get them fast. My guy Brian in the chat DM me last night. He was going to get some tickets for he and his squad. I can't wait to see all of you out here at the River Resorts and Casinos. You got to be 21 years or older to attend. Brian wall said wall. You, were, you were saying that you are buying shots. Uh, I said I would get dirty well alcohol. I didn't say shots. <laughs> now, first off, Gila River Resorts and casinos, they don't have dirty well. Even their well is. I told Brian his had to be dirty, though. Just <laughs> it. I'm going to put some dirt in it. April 25th at 4 p.m. So we're going wire to wire. We're partying before the draft. We're going to be on air for the entirety of the first round and day two. And we're going to be hanging out after the draft. Food and drink included. 
So you pay, I think it's like 35 bucks right now. Check out that you get everything for free. Plus there's going to be giveaways. Last time we had a watch party at Gila River. You can ask Jessica, people in the chat, our guy, um, who am I, who am I thinking of coach Starks? Yeah. Like people were walking away with just like signed Larry Fitzgerald Jersey signed yeah. Kyler Murray gear. Like we got some new stuff gear. in store. Not like the old crappy jerseys. It's like the new, new with a nice little signature from some of your favorite Arizona Cardinals players. That interesting. Yeah. yeah. Does that, does that kind of tickle your fancy at all? Chase was there. He said, it's a blast. I promise you right now, it is going to be the best party in the Valley. We can hold up to up to a hundred people. And I think we're approaching <laughs> maybe three fourths of that. So get your tickets yeah. now. Let's let's have a great time. Myself, Bob Brock, Damon, Britton, Saul Bookman, the entirety of the PHNX peeps are going to be there. We're going to be partying. And hopefully this is a time where we can all celebrate the arrival of Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Do we get Charlie here? The, the, the hardball 199. We have not that. seen that. Harbaugh licking his lips. He knows MHA is good. Of course he does. Uh, Brian jumping in. I want Sam Bradford contract dirty, Johnny. That's filthy. That's, that's, that's basically me taking tap water and pouring like a dirty sock in that, there. That's, that's you going that outside is. and finding, you know, some some pool of water by the curb or the, the drainage system and putting it in a, in a shot glass. Tony jumping in. $5 super chat. Tony says, my dad and I will be there, but will Johnny and Bo lead the therapy session when the cards make their selection? Lots no, of I'll need therapy, Tony. You'll have to give me therapy. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to give you, like, we're going to have to give you CPR if something goes awry. Yeah, the really Arizona the Cardinals have traded down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the me. whole draft party is really just to get a support system there for Johnny yeah. in case things go bad so that he just has a lot of friends and family that can just help him through difficult times. You're just going to see me at one point. My body will be limp, and then just people will be just moving me, moving me through the crowd. Like that like Superman. Spider-Man 2 when he stops the bus. That's going to be me after the Arizona Cardinals have traded down. They've accumulated future picks. For some reason, all your clothes are tattered and torn. And they're just, they're just going to move you, and the next thing you know, it's just you off the balcony. And we're just like, okay, we're yeah. let's, let's move this thing forward. Yeah, can we, get Sh- can we get Shane in here to substitute? <laughs> can we get Damon? Can you get on camera, please? That's right. I do uh, trust everybody, Deuce, enough to crowd surf. Absolutely. Listen, it's regardless, it's going to be a historic night. It's going to be the biggest night in this franchise's history in, I think, probably half a decade. And we want to spend it with all of you. Uh, so, in all seriousness, come out to Gila River Resorts and Casinos. You will not be sorry that you did. No, it's going to be unbelievable. Uh, as you said, we are. Uh, We've already got over half of the tickets sold for this. What, what do we got? We got a big win in the in the March Madness. Uh, I have like a huge soccer parlay going, oh. and it was a uh, like an eighty third minute winner. A lot of money. I thought it was something exciting. Any jobs? Uh, soccer I'll parlay. Show you how Damon, much it is. It's Damon, pretty exciting. Damon, how dare you? Like that? Come on. All Let's right, twenty five dollars super chat just just jumped in. Let's take a look at that. That That's bad the old boy. One. Things That's that the actually old mean something here to this uh, this show. Oh, did we already get to it? Yeah, I apologize. We did. I thought it just came back on. See, my, my guys in the studio are just not focused right now. I'm focused right now with all of you. I'm, I'm sitting um, here. I'm trying to get Kentucky to cover this damn game, and I thought that's what it was about. And then, like, oh, we got... We it, It's fine that you got bets on it. I, I just thought it was something that was it's important. It's a lot of money, man. Yeah. Let me talk to you about something that nobody wants to have a conversation about. Taking an offensive lineman with their first pick, with an offensive tackle. I'm the only person right now that feels like that's still a possibility. Why is that? (laughs) I don't know, man. You're just trying to pick up the pieces. Uh, You're trying to see, um, I I guess, the light at the end of the tunnel. I I think that with the way that this organization and how the coaching staff utilizes its its team on game day i think that that's not very realistic as much as i think that they want to invest in the trenches invest in the offensive line i just don't think that they're going to get a player unless he has versatility to play guard and start i just don't know if they're going to utilize one of their top picks on that i think there's a better chance that joe alt is an arizona cardinal or fuaga than roma dunze 
But where are they going to play? They're just going to sit? They're just going to sit? They'll play, they'll play guard. Okay, well, that's what I said. That's not a waste, though. I don't think that's a waste. No, no, I said if you're taking a tackle to be a future tackle and is going to redshirt his first year, I just don't see – that's not how this organization operates. Lou, they're not taking him – they wouldn't take him at four. They'd take him at six or 11. They probably – I mean, they probably take Malik Neighbors at six, wouldn't they? Maybe. It's – it, I think it depends on which tackles are on the board. It's just well, like every, they're all everyone's on the board. But Marvin gonna jump inside and play guard. You're not gonna have. Yeah, a sure he three. could. Oh yeah, he could for a year. I just don't know if it makes sense. Fuaga can play tackle or guard. Randy said, "It's not a. T- it's a. It's a short term guard play, be- and your offensive line would just be it'd be the best unit you've ever had, and that's what they want." They love this tackle class. We know they love Joe Walsh. Can we say that? Well, that that's why I think that taking one that early would would shock me. I think that they got confidence that there's, especially with position flexibility on the offensive line down the draft board, they've got options. To, I, to say, like to say that they would take a, a guard that high, I don't think that they would have them ranked above a Rome or a, a Malik. I think that as much as I like the Jonah Williams move and it makes sense, I think it's naive to say that a tackle on a two-year deal for $28 million is going to prevent them from taking Joe Alt. Same thing can be said. If, if DG Humphreys was on this team, what would we be saying? We'd be saying they could definitely take a tackle. What would that mean for DJ Humphreys? Like I, I, think we, I think we need to be open-minded to that. That's and they would I mean- figure it out. But you, you get three three players, but I think that this team they like to utilize their roster on game day and to get a guy who doesn't have position flexibility to get somebody to just be the tackle of the future doesn't seem like the the direction that they would go. That's all I'm saying. Greg, two dollar super chat, Johnny in the market for a little Cooper Vigine. <laughs> you said it? No, I didn't. Vigine? Yeah, I know you didn't say that, but you almost did. <laughs> Like this video. Greg, how dare you? We had a, we had a great run uh, with you not just reading like you're Ron Burgundy. The I didn't finish the sentence. I caught myself. <laughs> did you? Cooper. Virginia. Or did the light go off? Somebody Come tagged on, me in, in like something. That. Somebody tagged me in something that said we were sus and it was video from the show. I couldn't figure out what it was about. We're, what were we sus about? We were ju- we were just coming back from I think uh, an ad read, sussy boys. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they call us around here. <laughs> That's the crew. Oh uh, well, yeah. Definitely make sure you, you like this video. Check all the content that we have up here on the YouTube page uh, from Monty Osford, Jonathan Gannon's media availability yesterday. Those videos crushing right now here at PHNX Sports on YouTube. Also uh, was asked if we had a podcast on Twitter today as well. Mike, I hope you found us. Uh, I gave you the link. We do also podcast this show. You can find it wherever you find your favorite shows. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher still around? Um, is, 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 are the other pod host site, podcast host sites still around? Uh, I'm sure we're on it. We're on the iHeartRadio app. We're everywhere. Uh, anywhere you find your podcast, make sure you rate it however their rating system goes and live a, leave us a nice little review on there. Say that uh, that Johnny's... Johnny's your favorite football insider. That would be nice. Like this video. Subscribe <laughs> to PHNX Sports here on YouTube. Yeah, drop a like. We're trying to get to 400 likes today. In the meantime, for Bull Brock, Damon Dog, I'm Johnny Venerable. Congrats to Damon Dog on the uh, seven bill bet. Whoa. No doubt made it with our friends at BetMGM. Not, not uh, quite yet. Okay, we got to. As we a got a Lock Definitely in. It. Hey, guess what tomorrow is? It's Mock Draft Fan Friday. Get your mock drafts in. Myself, Bo Brock, will read them live on air. We will grade them on a scale of Monty's. Can you get the full Monty? I think I've adjusted my grading scale from last time. I'm going to be a little harsher tomorrow uh, for uh, for the entire crew. Thank you for making this a banner week. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. We'll see you on a Friday. Peace. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 